Hey guys, my name is Curtis and this is Chelsea. And in this video, we're gonna teach you everything you need to know to bring home your bangle cap. Kim. Oh, we are off to a rough start. You seem rattled. So Chelsea and I got Kona about a year ago, and since then we've been documenting our time with Kona and sharing our experiences on YouTube. We've made 18 bangle cat videos, which is absolutely nuts. So if you guys haven't seen them, we've got a whole playlist going on ever since our first video about bringing Kona home. We've had countless people reach out asking for advice, product recommendations, food recommendations, and any tips and tricks we might have when it comes to bangle kitties. However, the first thing we want to talk about is if a bangle cat is actually right for you or not. Yes, bangle cats are very beautiful. They have a beautiful coat. They're very soft. Probably the prettiest cat out there. We're a little biased, but that doesn't mean they're actually going to be right for you. Bangles are extremely high energy cats. They require a lot of attention and a lot of care. We've mentioned all of these characteristics in a video titled things you should know before getting a bangle cat. We heard a lot of feedback too about areas of the world where bangles have become super popular and trendy from things like social media. Then people bring these cats home, they realize they aren't the right fit for the household and they end up um, needing to be rehomed, lots of cats ending up in shelters. Which is sad, that's not what we want to see. We want to see everybody loving their fur babies. Kona, when will you learn to face the camera? I know. Come here. Nope. Now face this way. <laughs> Okay, so you've really thought about it and you've decided that a bangle cat is gonna be the right fit for your household. <laughs> the next thing you're gonna wanna do is find a reputable breeder. Or you're gonna wanna go to a shelter and adopt one of any of these kitties. What we always suggest is finding a fully licensed bangle breeder. All you have to do is just ask if they're a licensed breeder and generally that means that these breeders have been vetted and um, they've been looked into to making sure that their breeding practices are humane. And also that you're gonna be receiving 100% pure red bangle. The last thing that you want to do is find out that your breeder is treating animals inhumanely. So once you've found out that they're actually breeding animals humanely and they're a proper breeder and all that kind of stuff, first thing that I would do then the, what we actually did is when we found a breeder is we went and visited them in person and that's just to like back up the assurance that you've already, you know that they're a licensed breeder but you just want to see it for your own eyes. We did this before we put down a deposit or anything like that. We thought it was really nice to see what environment Kona was growing up with. We found out that she's growing up with a bunch of little kids around her, which we thought was awesome because we knew she was gonna be well adjusted to having lots of people around, being handled lots. All of these things were definite pluses and we would have never known any of this had we not actually gone to see where Kona was brought up. Okay, so now you've found a respectful and an appropriate breeder. So now it's time that you can put down your deposit and pick out your new kitty and start planning how you're gonna bring this little boopster home. This is like the best part. I loved all the online shopping and planning <laughs> before we even got Kona. She's definitely the planner. You guys can't see her in frame right now, but she is, she's watching the screen so intently. Speaking of that, we actually have some really exciting news and Chelsea has been working super hard to create a brand new bangle cat planner. This works for more than just bangle cats, but we designed it specifically around bangles because obviously you guys have come to know us and Kona for being a bangle. She actually came with a lot of paperwork that we weren't actually expecting and we had no place to put it. It just kind of sat in the drawer for months and we didn't really have a good solution for it, which is why Chelsea created this super adorable and modern looking cat planner for our new bangle kitty and hopefully to help you guys out. So what's included in the cat planner is all of the information we can think of when it comes to picking up your bangle kitty and all of the records that you're gonna need to keep going forward. I think it's really useful if you have someone cat sitting for you, they have all of the information in case an emergency comes up or in the future when we go to travel with Kona, we will have all of her records in one place. So the first couple of pages are basic information about your cat and a dedicated cat sitter information page. This has all of the emergency contacts and anything somebody might need to know to help look after your kitty cat at a glance. What their routine is, what their favorite toys are, who you should contact first if you have any questions. Kona's right behind you on the glass. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that's a bangle for you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Other sheets that are included are things like vaccination records, vet information, weight trackers. The weight tracker is something that was an afterthought for us. I wish we would have had it. It was a big question about where Kona was in her growth stage, how much more we could expect for her to grow. And we always get comments in all of our videos saying, how old is Kona and how much does she weigh in this video? And <laughs> we never tracked it, so this would have helped us. It would have helped us big time. Your kitty cat is definitely an investment, so there is an expense tracker there. It's really easy for you to go overboard on things, but knowing how much you spend on average for your food, flea and tick treatments, things like that. Furniture. It's <laughs> my kryptonite. We also have a weekly schedule and chore chart. If you have little kids, this would be great for them. It comes with little check boxes to make sure that they have done all of their daily, monthly, and yearly duties for the kitty cat. Believe it or not, we've actually had comments from quite a few kids saying <laughs> that they're trying to convince their parents to get a bangle cat. So we thought by having this little chore chart, it'd be a good way to instill some responsibility. And maybe if there's a kid out there who wants to show this to their parents, say, look, I'm gonna do all these things, might help them out. <laughs> a really good example of where I know that this is gonna help us out and help you guys out, we haven't been able to take Kona across any borders, but having a clean binder or documents all in the same place to show border officials when we try to take Kona into the States is going to be very useful. I know that I also plan on taking Kona to see my grandma soon. My grandma is in a long-term care facility and they require um, seeing Kona's vaccination records and things like that before I take her in. So I'm gonna impress them with my organized cat binder that has everything up to date for Kona. <laughs> to be honest, I'm actually super happy that Chelsea made these because we did look these up on Pinterest or on Etsy before and there was lots of options out there, but they were way too girly for me to be quite honest. So I do like how she created these. They're very modern, um, pretty minimal, but they do have a little bit of Bengal cat in them too. So I really uh, like them. Yeah, if you're getting a Bengal cat, it's because you have a love of leopard prints. So. so if you guys do want to help out this channel and you guys are looking for one of these, we're going to be selling these for the first month for $5.99. And then from there, we're going to jump them up to $7.99. So if you guys want to get your hands on them early, I highly recommend it. We'll put a link in the description below. If you guys do pick one of these up, be sure to tag us on Instagram. We do want to see you guys using these. Yeah, because we want to keep making more kitty cat videos. We want to keep helping you guys out and answering your questions. And this is just one very small way for you to support us. And if there's any other products you guys want to see from us, please let us know in the comments. If there's something that um, you guys would really benefit from that we can help you out with, please let us know. Okay, so enough about the planner. Let's talk about the products that you're going to need to bring home your Bengal kitty. Honestly, it's pretty straightforward and any of the products that we talk about will be linked in the description below. Honestly, we get a lot of questions about what litter box we use and that's because it's more discreet and enclosed. We're actually in the process of changing Kona's litter box. If I were you and I was just starting out, I would not go with anything elaborate unless you already have kitty cats and something established in the house. I'd stay away from the robots or big enclosures, anything that might be intimidating for your kitty cat. Honestly, a straight up $10 tray, like Curtis said, is probably gonna be your most effective. Thing. The other question that we get asked all the time is what kind of litter we use. And honestly, we just use like pine pellets. It's what the breeder was using when we picked up Kona. Honestly, we just use the pine pellets because that's what the breeder was using. We wanted to keep it consistent. There's really no reason for us to use the pine pellets other than that's what the breeder was using. We do know that it's a little bit more eco-friendly. That is actually a pro tip though. When you pick up your little bangle kitty, ask the breeder what litter they're using. And I would recommend at least starting with the same type of litter. It just makes your kitty cat more comfortable, more familiar, less likely for accidents. Next, you're gonna need some sort of carrier and just literally you're gonna need something to get the kitty from the breeder to your house. It doesn't have to be a cat backpack or anything crazy. We already knew she was gonna be our adventure buddy, so we already had a backpack. And at the time we just used a cheap Amazon cat backpack. Um, we didn't need anything too big because she's just a little kitty when you pick her up, so it really didn't matter. But honestly, anything will work. It doesn't have to be any extravagant. You just need to get them from point A to point B. Safely. That's the point of having a carrier. Yes. <laughs> Uh, you're also gonna need food and water dishes. Again, the theme of this video is just bringing your kitty cat home. It doesn't have to be anything extravagant. We got a little set of bowls. 
I think they were like $7 on Amazon at this point in time. The best kind of cat food bowls are going to be shallow and wide. This is so that their whiskers don't brush up against the sides of the bowls. Cats don't like that. They won't eat out of them. I did not know that. Too much whisker stimulation. The one, the ones that we got actually said they're elevated to promote digestion. I don't know if I believe that, but sure. Next, I would recommend getting a cat scratcher. This is pretty much a must. And in our opinion, you wanna have a good balance of having enough scratchers around your house so that your kitty always has a place to scratch and also to balance out the fact that you don't wanna have a bunch of cat scratchers around your house. One of the best investments that we've ever bought is the $7 cardboard cat scratcher that I'll put on the screen here. Yeah. These can literally be as cheap as 10 bucks and it has lasted Kona's life so far. It's been a full year starting to get a little bit beat up, but she absolutely loves it. It's small, it's portable, you can take it with you and you can just leave it around the house and it's not that big of an eyesore. Yeah, it would be easy to have multiples of these in their house and like Curtis said, it's light, so it's really easy for us to take when we're visiting other people's houses or when we're traveling in hotel rooms. Then we always know she's got an outlet to get her scratches out. However, when we are looking for cat scratchers, we do try to find the most modern and clean looking ones. So I'll, we've always had this one here, which I'll put on the screen again. Um, it's kind of the most modern one that we found and again very inexpensive in comparison to most really expensive cat scratchers if you guys do want to go super high-end we do have some on the way I, fortunately we don't have them here for this video but stay tuned because they're coming they're i'm amazing. so excited the cat products that we have coming i am so excited for i think they're gonna match the house perfectly i have never seen nicer looking cat products before but again anyway if you're not like us any cat scratch will work it doesn't have to be expensive or extravagant. It just has to be some place for your kitty to get their scratching tendencies out or else they'll scratch up your furniture. <laughs> the last thing that doesn't actually sound like a necessity, but is going to be a necessity, are some cat toys. When Kona was little, she had a ton of energy. She was a little ball of fire. So this helped us get some of her energy out. And it's like the most enjoyable part of being a little kitty cat parent is getting to play with them. The most important toy that we got was a chaser toy. We got this little a teaser or chaser, you know, like something on a string that you can pull in front of them. We got this one off of Amazon. This was basically fishing line that had interchangeable um, ends. Ends? Hook doesn't. They had interchangeable chasers, whatever they are. Uh, some had feathers, some had little fuzzy things on them, different colors. For whatever reason, she would get bored of one, we would just change the colors and she would be all excited all over again. She lost her mind when we brought these out for the first time. I think that Kona is right at the edge of frame right now, but I wish you guys could see this. She's see laying yeah, the whole length of the table, just laying in front of us, watching us right now. Oh. <laughs> this is what Kona's doing right now. This is what we see versus you can, what you, you guys just, see. You can just see her ears right in frame. <laughs> You're so sweet, Kona. <laughs> Two other products that really helped us with our training were the cat scratch deterrent as well as the catnip spray. Basically, anything that we didn't want Kona to scratch, we sprayed it with cat deterrent or anything that we saw her going to scratch, we sprayed with cat deterrent, which basically just smells like citronella. Apparently kitties don't like that, so. I love the smell though, so. Wasn't too bad for us, but yeah. Kona didn't like it. And anywhere that we wanted Kona to scratch or thought that it would be like a playful place for her, we'd spray with the catnip spray and it seemed to work fine. So things like the cardboard scratcher, um, that would be sprayed with catnip. Things like our couch, that would be sprayed with a deterrent. <laughs> Do you wanna play slaps with me? The one thing that you're gonna wanna do is maybe test the spray. We didn't have any problems, but if you're gonna spray it on your couch, test it on a little area behind it or something just to make sure that it doesn't stain. So again, we didn't have any problems, but I don't wanna say that you sprayed all over your couch and it turns it orange or something. <laughs> Honestly, as far as products go, I think that's basically it. You don't need that much when it comes to bringing a little kitten home. But there are other accessories that you're gonna need, especially when it comes to taking your cat outside. Kona is microchipped and we got that through the breeder, which was awesome. So that makes you feel extra safe when you're taking your bangle out. Um, but you're obviously gonna need a collar. We always put our phone number and her name on it. We don't like to put, <laughs> hello Kona. Uh, we don't, we didn't wanna put our address or anything or anything like that. We just wanted something 
um, that if somebody finds you, they can call us right away and we can get in touch with whoever has the call. The next thing you're gonna need is a harness and not the collar. Um, when you're taking your Bengal cat outside, it's more important to have the harness because the collar needs to be a breakaway collar so that if they ever get caught on something, it breaks away. When you have a harness on them, it can't be a breakaway harness. It needs to be more of an escape proof harness so that they can't get out of it. That being said, when you have the harness on them, you're gonna have to supervise them all the time just because there are horror stories of kitties hanging themselves in their collars and harnesses if they're not breakaways. Okay, let's talk about food because I get questions about food all the time and I do want to help everybody out, but talking about food is starting to drive me nuts. Hey! When we picked Kona up at 12 weeks, which is a little bit longer than normal for kitties. And just at that time, she was just starting to be converted from soft food into hard food with the breeder. So when we first picked Kona up, we were feeding her a mixture of soft and hard food. Whenever we feed Kona food, it's always a high protein version of whatever cat food we're feeding her. What food Kona really likes is a brand called Tiki Cat. So when you open up the wet food, for example, there's chunks of like real fish or real salmon um, or real meat inside of it. And she seems to really love it. Since then, we've weaned her off onto full hard dry food. This dry food is a high protein food, again, by the same company called Tiki Cat. This isn't sponsored. I wish it was because it's not cheap. Bang <laughs> feeding a Bengal cat is not cheap feeding her high protein food. That being said, we also fed Kona raw food for a while. It took her about a month to get converted onto it. And even after the month, she didn't really take to it, losing an unhealthy amount of weight. It was a struggle. We were throwing out so much food and you could tell that Kona was just having a really difficult time. We always wanna do what's best for our kitties. If she isn't eating enough, that's not healthy. So that's not the best for our kitty. We do know that wet food and raw food are incredibly good for bangles. Again, honestly, we've tried it. It hasn't worked for us. So what we encourage you to do is just to experiment and see what's best for your kitty. But finally, one thing that I do recommend is whatever food you feed your bangle, make sure it is a high protein food because that is super healthy for them and super important. Another thing that we can suggest to you is to talk to your breeder and ask what the breeder is feeding them because chances are they're gonna be much more knowledgeable than you. Again, with the transition from bringing your bangle from the breeder to your home, keeping the food consistent is just gonna make that experience a lot easier. We are gonna look into this more and we actually do wanna get a vet on this channel to talk about this specifically because it seems to be a hot button topic. Absolutely. They also say that feeding your cat wet food is a big deal because cats are often dehydrated and obviously kibbles don't help with that. Which leads us to the next point. It is known that cats in general get most of their water intake from wet food or raw food. So by feeding them dry food, you're kind of taking that away from them, which can be dangerous to your kitty. Cats instinctively do not like to drink from water bowls or dishes. Um, they don't like to drink from still water because still water out in the wild has bacteria in it. You want a fresh running water source. Which I always think is crazy that they still have these wild instincts that they know not to drink from still water out in nature. And that carries in into your house as well. There's two good ways around this. The first is a kitty cat water fountain. If you haven't seen these, it circulates the water through it so that your cat sees a flowing water source, it's more likely to drink out of it. Kona, for example, we heard that, <laughs> that lots of kitty cats do this. She just drinks from the tap, no problem. If she sees you heading towards- She'll only drink from the tap, yes. actually. <laughs> if she sees you heading towards like a bathroom, she will run after you and make sure that she sits in the sink and waits for you to turn <laughs> the fountain on. I personally am not worried about Kona being dehydrated. She will tell us when she's thirsty. <laughs> like every two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> So now you have all the products, you have all the knowledge to bring your Bengal kitty home. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do when you go and pick up your Bengal kitty is already have the litter set up in the place that you want it. As soon as you bring your Bengal cat home, the first thing you need to do is put them in the litter. What this is gonna do is have the litter be the starting point from when your kitty gets into your home and they'll kind of map out the rest of the house as the litter being their starting point. Throughout the day and probably like every couple hours or so, we always made a point of putting Kona back in it just so that we actually knew she knew where it was. I don't know if we needed to do this, but it was just some extra reinforcement. <laughs> Peace of mind for us. <laughs> Pretty much. But since the day we got Kona, we haven't had any accidents. There was one little accident when she was wearing her gown that somebody pointed out. She took a dump on the carpet <laughs> the first night. But it other than that, it's been okay. And it I, was and so gonna... circumstantial, okay? <laughs> I am going to blame the gown because she didn't want to move in it, not Kona herself. <laughs> 
So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is introduce your kitty to your home room by room. Day one, it would be very overwhelming to show your little kitty a huge house. So we sectioned off our house. Um, our place at the time wasn't very big. So the living room, kitchen, dining room was all kind of one big area. So we just left it that area and then closed all the other doors. It wasn't until two, three days later that we opened up our bedroom door and let her explore that area. And then again, we opened up all the doors in our house slowly but surely so that she wasn't overwhelmed. It's also kind of like a mental exercise for them too. So it was kind of cool to see that we kept all these doors shut when we went and left it open. Kona would be in there for like an hour straight, <laughs> just literally going in every little nook and cranny in the room and exploring it. And it kind of like got a little bit of her energy out mm -hmm. and it just like, um, I don't know, it distracted her for a couple hours, which is cool. And I'd like to see her explore every room, so. I think containing her to a smaller space right at the beginning also helped her not just run and hide somewhere dark like under the bed and we never saw her again. So when Kona was a kitten and we just got her, we were originally feeding her about three times a day and kept her on a feeding schedule. Once in the morning, once around noon, and once around night just before bed. At this stage, kitties are going so rapidly that they need a lot of food. And at this point, we try to keep her in the stages of hunt, catch, kill, eat type of thing. We, were, we actually got Kona during COVID, so we were very fortunate to have all this time with her and try to keep her on this schedule. Mm -hmm. That honestly, it kind of works for Kona. You can see that her energy peaked at certain times and then she ate and then she wanted to sleep right away, which was perfect. Um, but again, every kitty is different. Every kitty has a different personality. So just do whatever works for you. If you're finding that your cat is having behavioral issues or it's keeping you up late at night because that's when it wants to play the most, introducing a feeding schedule like this would really help you out. And obviously if you've already started with this as a kitten, it's gonna be easier for you to continue it rather than getting your cat to pick it up when it's a little bit older. However you feed your cat, I don't think it really matters, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you read the labels on the back and make sure that you're not over or under feeding. You don't wanna make sure that they're under neutralized, undernourished, <laughs> or overfed, so you don't want to have an obese kitty. That's for sure. <laughs> and finally, just be sure to play and spend some quality time with your new Bengal kitty. Having a new little kitten in your house is a ton of fun and takes up so much time of your attention. Um, I, I miss it. When we got Kona right in the middle of the pandemic, we went from watching like 12 plus hours a day of TV to what seemed like almost none, and yeah. we spent all of our time playing with Kona. Thankfully, we had all the time so we could bond with her. And I actually think that's why she's so attached to both of us for that. A lot of the times when you get a bangle, people say they attach on one person, not the other. But because we were able to spend so much time with her, I think she really has an attachment to both of us, not just one of us. Okay, so that was a super long video. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys liked this video and found it helpful. If you guys have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below. We might have to do another follow-up FAQ on this one because it doesn't matter how many questions we answer, I'm sure there's still more. Yeah, we've got an FAQ video up in the works and we have a one-year update on Kona. We've had Kona for a year now. So be sure to subscribe if you want to see any of those videos. And again, if you want to see our journey with Kona so far, there's a whole playlist. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. So again, I hope this video was helpful in bringing up your confidence if you're about to pick up a Bengal kitty or if you're thinking about getting one. Again, if you guys want to see any more videos like this, our weekly vlogs, our travel adventures with Kona, uh, or any of our camera tutorials, please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell to get notified when we post new videos. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.